Just like having the right information is necessary to make solid hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a presenting sponsor of the Spark. State Systems is focused on protecting life and property. As a local, privately owned company, our foundation was built on providing all businesses with complete fire and security protection and infrastructure cabling. State Systems is proud to be a part of the Mid-South community and a presenting sponsor of the Spark. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of the Spark. Additional funding provided by Christian Brothers University and Baptist Memorial Healthcare. Get better with Baptist. This month on The Spark, our theme touches on aging. We'll learn more about a regional nonprofit focused on job retraining for senior citizens, home health, foster care, and more. We'll take a look at a locally owned operated ambulance company known for caring for and sharing with our community. And we'll discuss how an organization is bringing the arts to life where seniors live and gather. Have you ever been excited by a new idea? Inspired by watching someone lead by example? When we talk about creating change, we start by sharing the stories of everyday heroes who are making a difference in their own way, so we can learn and do the same. This truth is the power behind this show, which is focused on business and community leaders that are leading by example to give back, fuel change, and create new opportunities for the Mid-South. I'm Jeremy Park, and this is The Spark. Established in 1961, they focus on senior citizen services, foster care, home care, and a ton of other things. I'm here with the president and CEO of Maritan, Melanie Keller. And as I alluded to, 1961, it was the formation, the founding year. But give us a little bit of the history for where we are today with Maritan. Well, the agency started in 1961, as you said, um, actually in the basement of a church as a senior center and grew into the programs we have today. Um, we've added foster care in four states, um, Tennessee, Georgia, Mississippi, and Arkansas. Uh, we do senior employment for people that are 55 and older that are re-entering or just now entering the workforce. We provide a variety of skilled and non-skilled services in the home. We have a skilled home health agency that provides home care, uh, physical therapy, nursing, occupational therapy, speech therapy to uh, people that have had a recent hospitalization or a new diagnosis. So we go in and teach them how to um, better handle their disease process, to be independent, to, to be healthy. We um, added disability services, which grew out of our foster care services as children with special needs aged out of the children's services and into the intellectual and developmental disability services. So we provide residential and nursing care uh, for that population as well. So four states, over 500 employees, right? Right. And when you look at it, obviously you alluded to a very large bandwidth in terms of the services you provide. Let's start with foster care. So okay. working with fragile youth, give us an idea of what foster care means for you guys. Well, for us, it's a focus on children that are considered medically fragile. So they have um, medical needs. They may have been born um, with diseases like HIV or drug addictions. Um, they've got special needs, whether it's a heart condition, feeding tubes, tracheostomies, and also children that have um, uh, some pretty significant emotional and behavioral challenges. And so you're stepping in and you're making sure that one, that they have the right support network in place, right. but then all the tools and services along to make sure that they succeed, is that right? Right, we're always recruiting um, foster parents. Uh, we provide the services in the home, the foster parents' home. We provide all the training, um, all the support, and in turn, uh, those families open their, um, their homes and their hearts to these children and provide them a stable environment. And um, a lot of times that even leads to adoption. Nice. And so transition that over to home care, because obviously that kind of goes a little bit hand in hand, but um, talk about the work that you're doing to, to keep citizens there in their homes. Well, as I mentioned, the skilled home health, um, we're trying to achieve an optimal level of independence so people can remain in the community. And then we have a variety of homemaker services with um, different funders and those homemaker services provide um, activities of daily living. They may help with personal care, with um, bathing, grooming, mm -hmm. um, cooking, light housekeeping, or attendant care where they're actually staying for a few hours at a time because the person's not safe to be by themselves or giving some respite care, that sort of thing. Gotcha. And then that um, 
also rolls over into some of our developmental disability programs, which again are focused on keeping people in the community. So we have um, different uh, levels of residential care. We have a program called Family Model, which is similar to foster care and then that um, service is provided in an, a family's home and they provide supports to the individual with um, intellectual disabilities. And then we also have a medical residential supported living model where we are providing services to people as they live in their home in the community. And that's a perfect transition to actually, let's see that in action. Okay, so great. let's take a quick look. Maritan is a not-for-profit organization that provides medical and social services for all types of individuals. Services provided by Maritan include medical and residential for individuals with developmental delays. These services include taking care of their day-to-day -day activities such as their finances and employment opportunities, as well as things like trips to the grocery store, bank, or post office. The staff is employed directly by Maritan and includes licensed direct support staff, LPNs, and RNs. In many cases, Maritan serves as the main means of support and assistance for its residents. Maritan, maximizing each individual's optimum potential throughout life stages. That gives us some perspective on the medical residential homes. You also do a ton of job training. Talk about some of the job training. Well, we do have some grant-funded job training programs that are for people 55 and older, and some of these individuals are entering the workforce for the first time. Um, some of them are re-entering the workforce. It really depends on their individual circumstances, what, what brought them to that point. Sure. But we have job coaches, and we interview the individual, and we do some testing and try to figure out where their strengths and weaknesses are. We do training, and then we place them in subsidized employment with nonprofits throughout the Memphis area. And that gives them the opportunity to get some good hands-on, on-the-job training, and really help them develop their skills so they're the perfect employee for our, um, our employers here in the city of Memphis. So you're, you're kind of working on all sides. You've got the pipeline with the job opportunities, you're doing the matchmaking, and then also right. too the skills assessment and the training to make sure that they fit all the qualifications. Right, and it does fit into our um, general mission of helping people maintain their independence and so. remain in the community because they're able to you know, continue to contribute to the society and the community and feel good about themselves and have those skills. And when you talk about contributing, you have a number of super easy and fun ways, especially with a midnight bike ride, right. but to give back and get engaged with Maritan. Right, our um, midnight bike ride is our signature event and we have that every August and it's held at Tiger Lane and there's usually a couple thousand riders, there's bands, it's a lot of fun. People can ride their bikes through the city of Memphis at midnight and we always need people, of course, to ride and support the event, but sure. also to stand along the sidelines and cheer on our riders. And our other big event is Silver Bells, which we launch every year around Thanksgiving to about the week before Christmas. We have a tree at our main office, 4700 Poplar Avenue, and it has little bells on it with an individual's name and their age and what they would like to have for Christmas. And it's not items like you would see, you know, children want Xboxes and um, bicycles and so forth, but what the people we serve ask for are basic necessities that none of us would think to ask for for Christmas. Sheets, towels, incontinence pro products, just the basic needs. Sure. And um, we've been very lucky that we've now partnered with the Bank of Bartlett and they're putting trees and the bells in the lobbies of their branches as well so people have the opportunity for more than one location to, to pick up a bell and adopt a senior basically for Christmas. And you have to think these are our loved ones. I mean right. so these are our grandparents, these are our parents, these are our loved ones and so to take care of them especially in this unique but very loving way is really important. Well you know this is one of our most vulnerable populations and also sometimes the most forgotten and you know whether you want to pick up you know pajamas for someone or whether you just want to make a cash donation that helps support services throughout the year it helps buy cleaning products and incontinence products and perhaps a spray for a bug infestation in the house or you know buy an air conditioner for someone in the heat of the summer so again that support is not just for christmas time but any contributions help us care for those individuals year round, year -round absolutely yes. Well, I greatly appreciate everything you're doing in the community and for coming on the show and sharing. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it.
They're bringing the arts to life where seniors live and gather. I'm here with the founder and executive director for Creative Aging, Meryl Klein. And obviously being the founder, you have a unique storyline to Creative Aging. But give us the mission and the backstory for Creative Aging. Our mission is to improve lives of older adults through the arts. And the reason that we do that is that years ago when I first began looking into this, um, there were studies being published at the time that documented the benefits of engagement with creative activities or the arts uh, for seniors, both, both mental, physical, social, and emotional. And so when you look at cultural arts in general, um, especially performances and when you're bringing in things like uh, painting classes you know obviously there's mobility sure. there's the communication and dialogue and the collaboration and camaraderie among them so it covers a, a, a ton of different levels it does but what it also lets them know is that they're still embraced by the community it's not as if they're sent somewhere and marginalized they're they're participating with artists that are pretty well known in the community and it gives them more a sense of control decision making. Talk about some of the artists because I mean these are professionals that you work with. Um, easiest names to offer would be Joyce Cobb, Ruby Wilson. Uh, we work with a, a band now called the Double D Band. Folks love them. Also the Beverly Brothers. Uh, we've worked with Lily Afshar, classical guitarist. So we've got a roster of about 60 artists nice. who are all professional artists. They all earn their living as artists. And so that's the game changer of this is you're paying them so you're hiring these artists, these performers, these musicians, these bands um, to come in and perform and engage the senior citizens. Absolutely. In fact, we pay well. Um, since we started our programming in 05, we've paid out slightly over $650,000 in performance fees to local artists. And you're working with over 55 centers, is that right? Or 50 exactly. Exactly. And we do, like this year, we'll end up doing 700 programs wow. across those. So you can see many of them get more than just 10 or 12. So you're teaming up with the, the homes and the centers and you're mm -hmm. saying, hey, we have this program that we can bring in and there's a little bit of skin in the game on their end, but by and large, you're underwriting the majority of the cost to be able to pay the performers to come in and pay them well. Right. Um, so it's an economic development, it's a job for them and it's a nine to five type of job because they're coming in during the day. So that way they have their paid gigs at night as right. well. Um, but you're, you're really, so on both sides, I mean, it's economic development, it's jobs, it's job creation, but it's also, too, all the benefits for the senior Seniors. citizens. And that actually was our initial focus. The, the support for the artists is a marvelous byproduct. But we were focused initially on, on working to improve brain health for nice. seniors. And so obviously there's a ton of fun storylines that go with this, but let's take a quick break and let's show viewers a day in the life of Creative Aging. Here at, at Grace Healthcare as the activity director, I plan the calendars and part of the calendars is I include musical entertainment and I utilize creative aging for my musical entertainment. This organization is great for the elderly because it brings quality entertainment to the residents. I'm guaranteed a quality performer when I book a performer through creative aging. Music stimulates the resonance. It brings back memories. Music is very important to incorporate in the activities with the residents just because that it means a lot to them. A song is not just a song that they hear, it may be a song from when they're a teenager, you know, or, or a song that they sang with their kids. So that gives us some fun perspective on creative aging. And I say fun because obviously you're having a lot of fun. Um, but when, when you talk about a program and building out the calendar, especially for these sen uh, senior citizens' homes and centers, what does that look like to you? Well, we, we field requests from activity directors at the different communities. And we'll send out the artists they request or find someone for a particular time slot. Um, we end up confirming it. We send the artist out. Uh, and then the artist invoices us rather than the facility. Typically, the musical performances are about 50 to 60 minutes. Our, our workshops last for a few sessions over a few weeks. Uh, and they include things like weaving and painting and glass fusing. Uh, and those typically last about 90 minutes per nice. session. And you have some amazing success stories, one tied to the Gettysburg Address. Share that story. Um, I was in a facility that uh, 
had some significantly disabled folks, uh, a lot of folks who were uh, dealing with dementia. And I wondered if there was great value in what I was doing to these people. And I had brought in a gentleman who was a theater actor, and he was in stage makeup and a costume, and he did an Abraham Lincoln monodrama. And there was one lady there who was totally un unconnected to the world around her. And she was one I was in particularly concerned about because she seemed to have no interaction. But when he began to cite the Gettysburg Address at the end of his performance, without opening her eyes even, she started to recite it with him. Wow. It was so powerful. It was such evidence of the ability of the arts to bring people to be present at just a, just a moment even. And for many of these folks who are, are, are dealing with dementia, that's not possible until there's something that can grab them and pull them to it. We find that uh, to be the same with music. It can evoke certain positive recollections from youth. And those sort of rote memories will bring people to the present sometimes. And see, as a loved one, that's got to be so powerful to see and to experience. And you have opportunities for anybody in the community to come out and play a role in these performances and to help give back and share some of those ways that, that volunteers can plug in with Creative Aging. We actually asks for, we ask for hosts for the different communities. And what that means is each month when they have a program, the host attends it and will be there to welcome the artist, help bring people in, um, react to the music because very often our audience members need someone to model some reaction to the music and then they let loose. They dance, they So if pass, I start they dancing, sing. they'll start dancing. Go. Nice, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so it's marvelous that way. So, so you get to kick off the party, that's good. You do. Um, you also have a ton of other events obviously that you put together and host um, that drive back to being able to fuel the fire for what you do. So talk about some of the upcoming events. Um, each year we do something called a senior game day where we invite seniors from around the city um, to come and play games. We provide all the games, people bring their own. We have a wide variety of games available. And this year we also had waterless manicures from Paul Mitchell, the school. We had makeovers, people love that. Um, and then we also had Godiva chocolate there, which oh, people nice. really loved. <laughs> a little uh, bribery never hurts with chocolate, uh, right? Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> so, and then we also have our senior variety show where we ask the communities we serve to hold an in-house talent show. We send judges, nobody there has to be the heavy. And then the people that win come and perform in our variety show. In the last couple of years, it's been at Kirby Pines. And these seniors get up and get on a stage and perform in front of 300, 350 people. It's so impressive to watch. And I'm sure there's an Elvis impersonator in there usually. Actually, no, but we have had a hula dancer mm. who was in her 80s in a grass skirt and a bear midriff. She was fabulous. <laughs> nice. And her name, Stormy Fortune. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's her name. So, um, so we do that, and we also do a large uh, party each year. And this year it's going to be a celebration of our 10th year. It's going to be an Ansdale. Well, congratulations. 10 years and still going strong. So gotcha. I greatly appreciate everything you're doing in the community and for coming on the show and sharing it as well. Thank you. Good job. They're a locally owned and operated ambulance company known for taking care of and serving our community. I'm here with the Chief Administrative Officer for Emergency Mobile Healthcare, EMHC, Michael Nolan, and very unique history tied to two tours in Vietnam and being a medic and seeing a need here in Memphis and right. launching a company. That's right, Michael Art and Betty Art own the company and Michael was two tours of Vietnam as an Air Force medic. And when he came back to the US, he went to nursing school and was working in a local ER here in town and really saw the need for an ambulance company that was geared for the aging population. So he started emergency mobile health care with one ambulance and, and that kind of also was tied in back to Betty's dad, Bert Ferguson, who is well known in the community. And we needed a moving and they couldn't do that. And so that's another reason why they saw the need to move or to start EMHC. Bert was the really guiding force in, in Michael and Betty's philosophy of community focused and you know Bert started WDIA and was a big into making sure of giving back to the community right. and that's our big that's where that comes from caring for and sharing with and that all that's on our door so every day when we walk into the building that's what we see and that's Bert's that's nice. Bert's thing so 
that's what we do. And so when you look at it, starting with one ambulance and that need, and now you have 55 vehicles? We have 55 total patient care vehicles. And the neat thing is when you look at what makes those vehicles kind of, well, say your signature calling card, but out in the community, when you see them is they're sprinters. So they're aerodynamically shaped, they use less gas, That's they're right. more energy efficient. What makes them different? It, what makes them different is our fuel bill is not <laughs> as expensive. <laughs> then we get 20 miles to the gallon versus the first one we bought got four to five. And we felt, you know, as they as the technology has changed, we we get they have death fluid in them, so we're not putting emissions back into the air. So we just wanted to make sure that we're doing our part not to conserve energy that we could be putting, you know, that we could spend a little bit more money on the front side, we can save it. And also, too, the technology on the back end, I think this is another thing that when you look at, obviously, healthcare overall, everything is really shifting toward technology. You're on the forefront of that, both with the vehicles in terms of figuring out where they are at all times, but also, too, with the equipment in the back. That's right. The, the back of the ambulance today is not like it was when I even started in the business 13 years ago. And everything is, is electronic. It's the patient care reporting is electronic down to our cardiac monitor. We can take a tracing of the patient's heart, transmit it into the hospital for the physician to see it. Immediately when we're done taking care of our patient, the ER physician is getting an electronic copy of our report. Um, our stretchers are hydraulic, so we're not lifting patients and it's a safer environment. So everything we do is, is patient driven and making sure that we are doing it in an efficient, cost effective manner. And that's a great opportunity to do a little teaser, which we'll talk about in a second, but let's show how that ties into an airplane. That's right. From the time we get the call to the time we get airborne, um, we mainly pick up from uh, one facility and take them to another in another state or take a patient back to Memphis or from Memphis to our level of care outside of state. Well, it's definitely uh, cut down our overnight uh, ground transportations and it's a lot more comfortable on the patient. Um, it's, it's safer for the employees, for the crew members. We offer a bedside to bedside transport, meaning that we will fly to your facility, we'll receive care of the patient from the hospital bedroom, and here we'll have either a unit on standby or a crew on standby. So once we arrive in Memphis, there's no wait time for the patient to get to the appropriate facility. So as we saw, you now have a plane. That's right. Talk about this evolution to have a plane now. It all started back in January when the ice and snow hit. We got a call from Johnson City to bring a patient into Memphis for specialty care. And that call ended up taking us 32 hours. So we really had to look at what is the most safest way, not that the ambulance, it, is not a safe means of doing, but you've got to. But you got to fight the weather. I mean, that's the, the weather. key. You've got to get them back in time, in a timely fashion. So, 32 hours is a long time. So, we got an airplane, and we've now got nurses and paramedics and EMTs that staff that. So, it's come full circle from when I started here with four trucks, and now we have 55 ambulances, and now an airplane, and we can we can provide just one more level of service. So. I think it's important that there's no one else in town that does that, and there's really regionally, there's no one else in town that does it. So it goes back with our mission, take, you know, caring for and sharing with the community that you've got to provide for those folks. So that's how that all evolved. But I think it's also important when you look at Memphis as a, as a hub, a medical hub, to be able to have service to these outside areas that need it, especially in an emergency, that's right. you have that ability to be able You're to exactly come right. to the full circle. We, and I'll use the example for a couple of weeks ago, we had a patient that the, the conditions for helicopter flying just didn't, the restrict, they, were, they weren't there. So we got the phone call, patient had been in a motorcycle accident and needed to come back into the emergency department for specialized care. And we got the phone call at 7 a.m. They were back in that emergency department at 9.15 in the morning. So we flew, got them, and you got to remember, you got to land at an airport, an ambulance has to bring, meet you there. So logistically, that, a lot of things, there are a lot of things happening in a very short amount of time. 
and the patient did very well. Their outcome was great. Well, I think it just it alludes back to, as you said, it's that full continuum of care to be able to provide that level of customer service. One of the things, switching gears, that you're extremely well known for, at least from a business perspective in my eyes, philanthropically, is your community engagement. And I know, as you said earlier, it's walking through the doors, it's literally stamped there, so you walk through it every single day. But um, from the AutoZone Liberty Bowl, to FedEx Forum, to Memphis Grizzlies, University of Memphis Tigers, uh, everything in between, the Redbirds, the River Kings, you're a part of everything as well as nonprofit events and races and such? I don't know any, I don't know anything else. I mean that's been the way that it's been from day one. From the day I started working here it, it was that was what was instilled is everything's about customer service and giving back and making sure we're taking care of those that take care of us. And Bert that's what Bert told Michael and Betty when he's when they started the company. So that still that his tradition lives on today and any time that we can be of, of help to any nonprofit or to any community agency we want to be there because you've got to have someone to take care of those folks and if you're at a race or you're at a any type of event you, you got to have medical care so um, we like to be a part of that easy opportunity to say hi to That's your right. team. That's right. I see you out at every one of them. So I uh, greatly appreciate for you know everything you're doing in the community, but also to coming on the show and sharing. I Absolutely. Really we're it. happy to do it. It's no secret that we're all getting older. When you look at the trends, the number of U.S. citizens ages 65 and older is projected to more than double within the next 16 years, growing from 35 million in 2000 to 72 million by 2030, representing nearly 20% of the total U.S. population. This same trend is taking place here in the Mid-South, so it's important for us to understand the changes in age structure and how it affects things like health care, living arrangements, mobility, and public policy. As we saw in this month's episode, there are many organizations focused on enhancing the quality of life for our older citizens, whether it's with job skills and training, safe and caring transportation, or hiring professional artists to perform and engage them. The key is realizing that these are our loved ones, our grandparents and our parents, and it's someday going to be each of us. So the more we can focus our efforts on today, the brighter our future will be tomorrow. Thank you for watching The Spark. To learn more about each of the guests and to interact with your stories of others leading by example, visit thesparktv.org. We look forward to seeing you next month and we hope that you'll join with us in creating a spark for the Mid-South. Just like having the right information is necessary to make solid hiring and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. State Systems is focused on protecting life and property. As a local, privately owned company, our foundation was built on providing all businesses with complete fire and security protection and infrastructure cabling. State Systems is proud to be a part of the Mid-South community and a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance has been serving the Mid-South since 1954. We've always focused on supporting our community and believed in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark.